Thanks, everybody. Uh, Welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Camilleri. Our next guest is a legend. He is an icon, uh, not because he was Johnny Rotten in the Sex Pistols, but because following the dissolution of the Pistols, he formed Public Image Limited. For those that don't know, Pill is one of the most influential bands for indie rock artists, punk artists, post-punk, industrial, and really most good alternative music following 1978, from Sonic Youth to the Chili Peppers to Nine Inch Nails. The new documentary, The Public Image is Rotten, tells the story of the band and its many members, but also the personal story of its founder, John Lydon, and a life lived in the public eye. Let's take a look. This is Bill! We were completely thrown in at the deep end right from the start. There's not very much fun being in a band like that. Having to deal with a management was more into the sensationalism aspect of the thing. I wanted immediately to start a new band, and one that would approach it without that media mockery attached. So I used the term public image, limited. We started rehearsing and the songs just flowed. It starts out really changed the landscape. It was like a you know a diagram of how to write a song. We were quite a wild band. There was always a huge undercurrent of danger. You know, when push comes to shove, you shove back. <laughs> the media wanted to bury me. I had to really, really fight for my survival. Metal box, it, it changed my life. It's one of my favorite albums ever made. When I left, I said, I'm gonna leave. Oh, I Oh, I'm gonna be leaving. I'm leaving the band. The list was damn well endless. Rise was what kicked everything off again. The success of that song was what, you know, Virgin had wanted at that time, remember, a hit record. Because up to that point, I hadn't considered that people actually really respected me inside the music world itself. John gets up and he starts singing. There's a kind of wind that he creates. You just sort of pop with your sail up and just... Hello! Are we ready, boys? Hello! 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 Please welcome director Tabor Feller and the man himself, John Lydon. I liked that presentation there. I'm surprised. Normally you don't like I've it? I've had to suffer the entire film. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Guys, congratulations on the film. Uh, I loved it. I, I'm a huge Pill fan. It was so great to get to see the entire story told, to hear the stories behind a number of your biggest songs, some songs that I think some people might not know. But at the same time, it was so wonderful to kind of bypass this thing that I think always eclipses the greater achievement of your career, which is Pill and to just simply talk about that. What was it like to do that when it comes to talking about yourself, John? Because I think so often people want to talk about the other thing and not about this thing that has been a labor of love for decades. Uh, well, look, it all works out well in the end. <laughs> it all shakes out. It's like uh, I've had to learn to have more patience than a hospital, really, because of the negativity I've had to put up with for 40 years. Now, this isn't self-pity from me. This is a, an actual reality. When you put your head in the chopping block and allow yourself to be judged by others, purely on creativity and original ideas, you will be hated. You will be resented and they will do the utmost they can to destroy you. This is called institutions. Governments, religions, anything you like. All of the things that stifle creativity are my enemy. And the public image is not. 
And I think that you, one of the things that displays how creative you wanted to be, how outside the box you wanted to be, is a moment where you're talking about bringing in Jaw Wobble for the first time, and then I think bringing in another member after that, and it was, can you not play? You don't really know how to play that well yet? Okay, yeah. get in here and start playing. And it was just the idea that if you don't know how to play that well, you're well, going to well, break we'll down the you or you'll learn with us. That be the point. Take the risk. For me, personality... Uh, uh, and, and, and bravado and endeavor are far more important than musical skill. Because musical skill is a learned, learned operation. It's a set of rules written by someone else that people all too easily adhere to. There's nothing genius or creative in a trained musician. So every single time I will take the mad cap lunatic. Now, it doesn't always work, right? right? <laughs> I, it's a dodgy ride, but, I mean, you've got to be fair. When I joined the Pistols, I mean, they were doing that with me, so I'm only returning the compliment. Well, it's a dodgy ride when it comes to the professional, um, professionalism of it all, but it's not a dodgy ride when it comes to the creative output, I think. I think the most creative you could ever be is to avoid the rule books. Right? And, and our music, all, all the way through, it really is street. It really is. It's, it's, that's the heart and soul of it. Street, did you say? Street, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm working class trash. Hello. <laughs> right. Hello, I'm trailer park, me. How are you doing? Right. And, and, and quite happy about that. I see no harm in that at all. I think I'm fairly intelligent and should have been given a fair crack of the whip when I was young. So I made my own, didn't I? And now I'm whipping the living daylights out of them. It isn't an institution, really, that I haven't uh, pointed an accurate finger at, is there? No. Uh, from, from royalty to the church. Uh, I was, uh, 40 years ago, I was on about what the priests were getting up to. Yeah, right on the first album. Yeah. And this is why I, 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 I never really made any attempt to sing ever in my entire life until the Sex Pistols seen me in an I Hate Pink Floyd T-shirt irony, because I don't hate them, right? uh, and asked me, to, would I be the singer? And I said yes, and that was the first second. That, uh, because up to then, you see, I went to Catholic school, and the idea of the priests having any kind of close contact was not going to happen. That's a long time ago, and nothing really has been done in how many decades until fairly recently now, we're, we're catching on. Well, I say it's not just like Catholic religion, it's the lot of them. Be very careful who you leave your children with. Any adult at all, really, should be treated with suspicion, unless it's me. <laughs> How did all this start? This, is, this documentary is eight years in the making, I read somewhere, is that true? Um, I mean, I, I worked on it for five years, but... Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, there, there, were, there, there was. Uh, they started the, the kind of quickly when people was gonna do their first tour uh, in 20 years, which was 2010. They put it together because um, I think it was Bruce, the drummer, knew Hunter, the producer. I think that's how you know. So yeah, we're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so they put a crew together, and um, there was another director involved, but um, you know that didn't work out. So then it was um, like, you know, put on the shelf for a little bit. What led to you interviewing John the way that you interview him? I think <laughs> you're the star of the documentary. And normally I think a documentary would, would you know, do a three uh, a lighting setup and maybe put a backdrop on him. You're interviewing him in his house while he's maybe in pajamas and drinking a beer and right, talking to the camera. Right. Well, I, I did want to do it in his house because I think that, um, you know, the, the, where people choose to live... Uh, can say visually a lot about the person, you know, or add to to you know your understanding of a person. So I wanted to do it in his house, but but um, the way we did it with no lights was just uh, uh, as uh, we had to do it like that because um, <laughs> no, we we ha we had to adapt. When we came in, my wife is the cinematographer. She wanted to put up one light just to raise the 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 level of light, just want, bounce it off the ceiling. And John was like, oh, you know, let's not bring equipment. Like, uh, let, how about we do it outside? We said, you know, like, scrap that. No tripods, no nothing. So then, uh, you know, we just basically started talking from then. And like that first day that we, we rolled continuously for five hours. 
So, you, when you first, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No. When you first formed uh, Pill, you said one of the tenets of it was to be transparent. Do you feel like this is the first time you ever really got to be as transparent uh, about the band as you wanted? No, to be? no, no. I've always tried to be as honest as I can, which is what I mean by that word. And I expect my fellow human beings who I'm sharing anything at all with to be equally open. Unfortunately, human beings don't really generally function that way. And so I, I faced a lot of disappointments in life. But be honest, be open, try the best you can. If it doesn't work, well, then you have to move on to other people. Now, that's a shame for me because a lot of the arguments in Pill were really record company say, uh, under finance situations. When you, you know every band member deserves a certain amount of money a year, you know, in order to function. Uh, record company holding the purse strings, that would be withheld or withdrawn, missing a month. And, and those permanent um, agitating situations cause a serious friction. And all kind of, they all end up kind of going to you first because you're the creator of the band yeah, or the so leader I, of the band. I, you know, hello. Yeah. <laughs> You're only lame number one. And you can only do so much because then it's the people holding the purse strings, as you said. I can't make the money suddenly appear, even though it's owed. And that's, that's how that goes. And many other situations like that. Record companies, too, the corporate way of thinking is to spread rumours, right? To get in between band members. Tell one person a slight variation of a theme. And antithetical to what a record company should be doing because you would they think. make money off of the band performing would, yeah. and being happy. You would think, but the ultimate ambition, you see, it is, it's driven by accounting, yep. the accountant department, and they don't like your choice of band members. So they slowly but surely erode that and then put in suggestions. And, and before you know it, it's the Bob Geldof backing band and good riddance <laughs> to a career. <laughs> You did end up working, not that it was the Bel Bob Geldof backing band in, in any way, but you did end up working with pretty professional musicians come, come around that, yeah, time yeah. for Pill, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The album. accidentally, of course. <laughs> what, was that, what was that like? Uh, well, I, it was for album, album. I, I, I took the band to New York uh, to work with Bill Laswell, the producer, but uh, they were too young and inexperienced, and they couldn't handle the pressure of the studio. And the record company were, again, cutting the purse string. So we had to act very, very quickly. And uh, Laswell suggested all manner of names. And shock, horror, people like Ginger Baker accepted. Now, I never thought I was in that kind of, like, league, you know, that people like that would respect me, but they did. And that went into making of really one of my, I think, great records it's 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 yeah. seriously tough but it was tough to do at the time i was sad about losing my younger band very proud about working with people like ginger baker and steve vi but then when i like, decided to uh, present the record to electro records i omitted to tell them who the band members were the new lot intentionally oh yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, For a bit of fun. And so they presumed it was a bunch of unknowns and sacked me on the spot. Yeah. Wow. And, and that's the record that birthed uh, Rise, which is one of the band's right. biggest, yeah. big, biggest, biggest songs. Ever. And that's, that's a song that uh, I don't know whether or not it's because it didn't catch on in this way or you've never wanted to sold this way. I don't know why that's not an anthem <laughs> like in arenas everywhere for well, it, sports it, teams or something. Well, <laughs> It shouldn't be. That would kind of ruin the song a little bit, but I could see it sort of being that. It's an incredible, epic song. Why, thank you very much, but I don't know who manipulates chart positions. Uh, I know they're no one I want to know, but I do know they are manipulated. And yes, there are many, many bands out there that make absolutely fantastic anthemic type music, uh, accidentally or deliberately, but they're absolutely pushed by the wayside because that's not what that corporate label's accounting department wants to fully invest in. Now, we're back to album, album, for instance. Uh, Electra opted to put all of their money into Metallica. <laughs> all right, so bye bye pill. Right, and was, and that, was that when uh, the Metall like the big Metallica album came out? The yeah. one that sort of separated? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and I mean, that's, that's a pretty dismal way of, of, of viewing it. There should be room for all of us in this, but no, 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 you know, 
They wanted to make a real big push to make that band make a lot of money for them. So I, in no way am I resentful to Metallica, they're, they're damn fine people, but I wonder if they're aware of, you know, just how used they have been there. They must be. I mean, they all live in very big houses. That's what I'm saying. I'm sure they're like, yeah, we were used, but come on, it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm, you know, I'm curious. In the documentary, you have Thurston Moore, you have Flea, Flea who auditioned for the band at one time, and I think is a friend. Yeah. And uh, you also, you have um, a Beastie Boy as well. Forgive me for forgetting his name. Yeah, Adam Horowitz. Adam Horowitz. Sorry, I didn't want to say Yuck. That's why I didn't yeah. say his name. It's Adam Horowitz. Uh, do you know, or have you known over the years, how influential Pill was? No. When did it occur, did it ever occur to you that they were wild? Uh, no, I, I, I stopped reading reviews in in music papers. Uh, way early on because the negativity was like, well, it, it wears you down eventually. It doesn't matter how strong-willed you are. It, it eventually will have a, a really destructive, soul-destroying def attitude upon you. It's like a dark cloud. That, how was Flowers... And so you stop reading it and then, you, and then you lose touch with anything that's good also. So you're kind of in the doldrums about it. It's, it's the way... Uh, I had to function there for quite some time. How was Flowers of Romance reviewed when it when it came out? Uh, well, the record company didn't want to release it, did they? <laughs> and so there you go again. So I, I had to uh, find a way around that, and so I had it released in Japan first, where it just went straight up to the top four. Yeah. Right? Uh, the same with Love Song, the single. There you go, a hit single in Germany. Virgin in England wouldn't release it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's like I had to almost yes break contract, prove it would sell before they would actually have to release it. Because what kind of court case would it be to to say, oh no, we told them it wouldn't sell and it has. You know, this going back to Rise for a second. Uh, I'm sure you've been asked this a lot, but it's so interesting hearing all of the battles that you've had to fight just to keep yourself and the band relevant in different ways after you've made the music. I mean, you have to fight to get the money to make the music, I'm yeah. imagining, and then you have to fight to get people to hear it. The key line in Rise is anger is an energy. Did you see that? Obviously, that song can have multiple meanings, but was that something that was really coming from all of the battles that you were fighting to just yes, keep it, it, it Pill is, alive? It, yes, yes, it, it, it's a valid emotion. But it, it's an emotion, really, that goes back to my childhood when I nearly died of meningitis and a coma, and it took four years for me to fully recover my memory. Uh, and my parents were told to keep me angry. That might spur things back in. So anger is an energy. That's, that's, but it's been a really poignant statement in my life ever since. And, it, and, and, and there it goes. That's a really, really useful tool that nature gave me there. Can you imagine nowadays, like, uh, doctors suggesting that the parents could just keep your child angry. It's, it's going to be okay. What was the toughest part? It worked about? well with Irish parents. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to happen no matter what. <laughs> uh, what was the toughest part about making the documentary for you? Oh, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, there's been a lot of, like, uh, tough parts, you know, that you have to figure out. But, um, you know, it's it, 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 it was always worth it. So, you know, like, I was glad to try to figure out anything we needed to, you know? Um, what was the toughest thing? You know, from, you know, figuring out music licensing to, <laughs> you know, like, you know, trying, try, you know, some people didn't want to be interviewed initially. Um, they had to be persuaded, you know, and, you know. Who did you have to persuade, if you don't mind? Um, well, you know, it's like Martin Atkins, like, for example, it's like we we uh, get along great now. But just he was the first person that I contacted, you know, like um, after I had started working with John. And I sent him a Facebook message because I already had him on, on Facebook. And uh, just very casual. And, and he was kind of like really a little bit dismissive. I don't know exactly what he said, but he must have... Like then I thought like oh maybe Facebook is not the way to contact him or you know but but he must have thought like you know this guy's not serious you know like, right. he didn't yeah. want to waste his time he didn't know how yeah. serious you were wobble yeah. uh, wobble uh, hung up the phone on me the first time I I I kept on calling him Mr Wobble 
<laughs> and he's like, what if I call you Mr. Cunt? That's what he said. And then he hung up the phone. <laughs> but it's fun. You know, it's, it, it, you know, that's hard, but it's like also a lot of fun. Um, but you know, it's like, I, I think a lot of people like um, that grew up around, you know, that time in, in that, you know, London or England, they're uh, used to testing people when you first like, Absolutely. it's not like, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, what's up? You know, it's like, you know. Yeah, like that, that's absolutely true because there's uh, so many people trying to take us on, uh, and offering dodgy deals and presenting really, really fake projects. So it's a natural reaction for every single one of us to be bitterly twisted in return to that. Uh, and that's a shame, but that's, th that's how human nature is. You know, when you've been ripped off and, and cheesed so many times in your life. And it's all of us, all 49 of us, right, feel this way. Uh, not about each other. The, our arguments are far more personal. But it's, it's a wicked world out there. But without that wickedness, really, none of us would have the strength to be what we are. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. And if I was asked, uh, you know, for any recommendation for anyone joining a band, I'd tell them, make all the exact same mistakes I did and take as many kicks in the chin as you can because you'll be the better person in the end of the day. And anyone who expects an easy ride out of life is not going to get it. Yeah, I don't think the music reflects an easy ride either. The no. music reflects kicks in the chin as well, which is what I've always loved about it. There is a fierceness to it and a, 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 an yeah. anger for lack of a better word right now, that, that is in, that, that is in the, that music. Has there ever been, has it ever occurred to you to go back and re-record some of those early songs, considering like, I mean, especially the stories of how they're recorded in this? But, uh, yeah, only accidentally if it was recorded in a live gig, but never never to go back into the studio. And, uh, and the way we are anyway as a live band, the songs constantly change shape. And, that, and that's an awful lot to do with audience reaction. I like uh, performing really up close and personal. I like to see the eyes of everyone in the crowd. And that's how I get my information about where we're going with them. And, and that energy, that absolutely changes and shapes the songs in, in so many different ways. Now, you, you and, and so far, I mean, not negatively working on it. You reformed Pill about 10 years ago, right? Uh, and started touring again. Yeah. And you were essentially not touring for what, like uh, 10 years prior to that? A decade yeah, and a half? Yeah, nearly 18. 18, so... Yeah, yeah, kept in constant debt by the labels. So what I had to do was work outside of music in order to go back into music. Uh, so, so magnificent oddities like a, a British butter campaign came along and you think, oh, ha, ha, how silly, what a sellout. Oh my God, they're the only people that treated me with any real respect in a corporate way ever. Right? And the money raised from that, we put some towards the debt so we could get away from them record deals. Once we were away from that, then we could go independent, put up our own label, buy back our, our publishing, buy back our rights, set it all up again, but completely independent of what we call the shit stem. Right? And that's been a hard, long, difficult journey. Uh, and one that at the time you couldn't really express to people because you're aware that it might come over as self-pity. So what you do is you endure. And also people have this uh, idea of you as an icon and as a yeah. legend, so you must be well off. You must oh, be yeah, good yeah, in some oh, way. Oh, that saucy bugger's rolling in it, of course. Right. Which is like crazy to assume because for like 30 years you were making really independent, really non-conformist music that is not going to be number one on the... Yeah, on, it certainly ain't. Yeah, on the billboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get some questions from audience. Who has a question? Okay, I, I have something oh, I want to say. Just now, now that you're mentioning all that time working outside the music industry, I maybe it's like not so many people here, I, I can give you the key to deciphering the film. So the film is basically, you know, John trying to make the music that he wants in the way that he wants. So first, he tried making it with his friends. Didn't work out. And he's always trying to make it with his friends. It didn't work out, didn't work out until he finds out, uh, he finds himself with Ginger Baker and all that. So he's making it now with his friends. Great music, but he's still not satisfied, right? So he's trying all the time to make music with his friends. And, and so I, I, want, I want to ask you about 
Like the one time that you were, during that period that you were working mostly outside of music, you did your only yeah. sol solo record, so. Uh, yeah, 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 I released a solo album, which uh, at the time, uh, uh, Virgin, which is my major label, uh, they said that they'd back my solo album if I went on tour with the Sex Pistols. <laughs> well, I was gonna do that anyway. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, they didn't back my solo album. In fact, they canceled the bloody project uh, after releasing a very minimal amount, I think five, 10,000 copies, something so stupid that it actually like cost me more to have it released that I should have just withheld it, period. <laughs> And, and those kind of spiteful moves. But he's dead right, Tabber. Yeah, I always want to work with friends. I'm, this is what I, I'm, I feel best at and most comfortable in life is working with my fellow human beings, trying to achieve something together rather than solo egotism. Uh, it's just the way I am. And, and I will always strive for that. And I, I'm sort of found that at the moment, haven't I? Yeah. With Bruce and Lou and... And, and in fact, yes, I think I definitely have. And the solo record is great. I recommend it to everyone. But like sometimes now with the current band, they play some of those songs, mm. and and that's amazing. Yeah. Was yeah. that a was that a sad period of time where you weren't touring and you weren't recording those eighteen years? Oh, but I mean, this is you find out the only thing in life you're actually good at you're stopped from doing. I mean, how sad is that? And then that's, I will forever, ever have a really serious deep contempt for what they call the music industry, you know? No one was there to help. And, and this is, for instance, like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, how on earth am I gonna go up there, cap in hand, going, please, sir, can I have some more? And no, it's not like <laughs> Oliver Twist to me. These fuckers nearly destroyed me and did their utmost to make sure of that. And I'm not gonna go back and grovel to them, not for anything. They have no right to put me in their museum. I don't belong there, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Do you think they tried to destroy you because the music was too outside the bounds of what they thought would be successful? I don't know Even if that's it- what makes the music great. I, I don't know if it's that, or maybe it's just because uh, they viewed me politically as a serious challenge to what we could call the status quo. Huh. The easy ride, right? I wouldn't take the pat on the back or the, t or the top of the head. Nice boy, Johnny, now can you write a pop song? Well, you know, what the fuck you think I've been doing for 40 years? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Pop Tones is? <laughs> uh, next question. Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, I was just curious about um, your take on, you, you mentioned in like great detail about how like the music industry is like a very like vile, corrupt sort of situation. You're but I'm never gonna get anywhere with that mumble, mate. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I'll try to be a little more articulate. <laughs> I'm just curious, what's your take on like other ways that people have been putting out music in like more recent times with uh, apps like SoundCloud and like Bandcamp and other forms of people putting oh, out music mean, for internet. people to hear? Internet yeah. is like a, a really lousy picture postcard version of a full length movie, right? <laughs> it's, you're not getting the quality, you're not getting anything. You're getting a rough, cheesy estimation with Wish You Were Here, written on sarcastically. This is not good enough. I come from a time where vinyl, full of just glorious tones, sounds, all the things we love about music, transferred then to CDs because we were promised CDs would be the answer, there'd be ever so much more information because of the digital content of it. Well, they ripped us off on that too, didn't they? Right? They suddenly drop the quality and their CDs are, are as rubbish as anything else out there. And anything on the internet, right? Don't fucking bother downloading it. It's not true. <laughs> there's no bass, there's no mid, there's no highs. There's just this guesstimation, right? That can't even really be bothered to be accurate. And, and, it, and this is it. This is the, our record industry at work going, yeah, that'll do. And it, at the same time, they're cheesing the fuck out of us, all right? With all of their iCloud deals and or whatever, blanket agreements and all of these terminologies that really mean we don't get paid for what we do. There you go. And it's a kind of the, came, the same 
Yeah, you give a round of applause for that. It's kind of the same corporate bullshit that we've been fed forever, which is consistently quantity over quality. Yes. You could, like a CD was like, you don't have to turn it over. You get more and you don't have to do anything with it. And now it's like, you can just listen to as much music as you want, but you'll never really understand or retain any of it because you're just flipping through yeah. poor quality. Yeah, meaningless droney noises that just are like a, a melange of bad desserts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible buffet. Uh, next, uh, next question. I think we have time for one more. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you learned anything about yourself over the course of making this film. Uh, lay off the custard tarts, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave it there, that's it. And, and when you do get a sponsorship deal like butter, definitely lay off. <laughs> I went overboard on butter. <laughs> Before we go, what has it been like, you know, I kind of asked this at the beginning, but I think we should end on this. What has it been like, you know, 40 years in kind of reclaiming the narrative of your artistic output right now? Uh, well, I'm a bit surprised. You know, you know this with me. I, mean, I don't expect an award for anything. I, I really didn't do any of this for that. But uh, and, and last year was a 40th uh, anniversary and all of that for the pistols and... You know, and I, and I kind of bitterly resented it. I, I thought, that's just not good enough. And then along comes Pill. Well, Pill has actually been working for 40 years. And so I'll stand up and accept that, you know. So here I am trying to uh, enjoy and endure this year. And, and this is coming out. And, and we've got a box set. And, and it all might end up wonderfully neglected as per usual. But I hope not. It's, it's what it is, and you cannot take the truth away from it. That, that stands, that legacy is not to be denied, regardless of chart positions. I don't want your fucking money, you know? I want your honesty. That's my honesty. Enjoy it, or go fuck yourselves. But I hope you don't, because that's really difficult. I tried once. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a great film. It's great to finally tell this story in completion. Uh, you have some shows coming up next month. You're gonna be playing at Public Image. is gonna be playing at Brooklyn Steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, in Philadelphia, it? Union Transfer as well. Yep. Uh, and uh, I think the, sh the whole tour is really starting out in New Orleans, and you're gonna yeah. be all across the country. People can check yeah. it out. Uh, and I, I've been on tour quite some time. Uh, we've just done 39 gigs in Europe, and, and including Japan. And, and, that, and that's like about halfway through for us. We're taking a slight break by doing press like this. <laughs> and, and on the 9th of October, we start again in America. And, and we work ourselves to death until we end up in Mexico City. In my hometown. A perfect scenario for, you know, a boozy tequila deathy. <laughs> well, I can't wait. I'm going to be at the Brooklyn Steel show. And you guys are going to be at Metrograph, I think, uh, screening the film and doing some Q&As there yeah. as well for people who haven't had the chance to see it. They want to go see it at Metrograph and uh, yeah, there's Lower a East Side. Peak, uh, um, tonight and then tomorrow at the Metrograph, and I think it's on for a week. Um, yeah. Everybody give a big round of applause for Tabard and John Lydon. <laughs>